So my name is Jessica Way, and I'm a fourth year actor, and I'm directing A Pue, written by Kanika Ambrose. Uh, and it's a play about four women who have all gone through uh, a serious loss, um, all of different types. We have Zaid, whose grandmother, who she's very close with, has passed away. And um, then we have Eileen, and she's sort of had her first serious relationship and it's gone awry and she tried to make it into something that it wasn't and now she's dealing with the loss of not having him and not knowing what to do without him. And then we have Diane who has lost her brother who she was extremely close with and he died in a car crash and now she's trying to deal with the loss of him and he actually right before he dies he kisses her uh, sort of that weird moment right before you die where you know you're gonna die and you just sort of do whatever you want just uh, and he loves her but as a sister but that's just the way it comes out so she's really confused by that and she's she has her husband who she just doesn't want anything to do with because she doesn't know how to talk to him about what happened so there's that conflict going on and then we have Janelle who is sort of like the sunshine person in the play. Her, she's a bit lighter and um, her loss isn't as new, so she's still dealing with it, but it's a bit more, um, she's looking back and she's a bit happier, or not happier, but um, she can look back and not be as affected by it, and so her, her story is about her first love, this boy she met when she was like 11, and they started dating when they were like 11, and then when he was 15, he passed away from leukemia. So it's just about the four of them, they're not really connected, they don't know each other, but they're all dealing with this loss, and it's just about how everyone in the world, you never know what they're going through. And it's just them. He wants to be with me. I just know it. Diane, I'm not leaving. I can't believe you. You're jealous of me, grieving over my own brother. But, Diane, I'm giving you some time to yourself. Isn't that what you want? <sighs> Damn right that's what I want. I want you off my back. Just leave then. If you want to leave, you stop being nice to me already. Diane, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> if I don't want to hear you, Richard, you traitor. Just leave if you I'm want not... to leave. I don't need to. I'm willing See? to get you. I can't stand you. Need... Shut up already. No new messages. Martin, this will be the last time I call you because I am tired of making a complete fool out of myself. Just call me and tell me that you hate me so that I can hate you too. Call me and tell me that you never want to see my face again so I can stop dreaming of yours. Kanika wrote the play, uh, Kanika Ambrose, and she's a fourth year actor as well. She's in my class. And uh, she is actually acting in it as well. She's playing Janelle. And she just, she just approached me and asked me if I would want to direct her piece. And I was a little taken aback at first because I've never directed before. So this is a really new, uh, scary, but exciting experience for me. Uh, so yeah, she just asked me and I was like, oh yeah, okay, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Watch his body disintegrate through the palms of my hands. This boy who I love from the start, and this girl who the boy with the dried up runny nose and the loose gym pants and the juice stain. The first boy I ever asked out. The first boy who ever made me feel special and pretty. And we dreamed of the day when his body would be better. When I could watch him play basketball again. We could eat candy outside in the rain again. Um, then we could eat candy until we were sick again and fall in love outside in the rain again. Joseph Walter Hines, January 6, 1983 to March 12, 1998. He was dead at 15 years old, and I was alone. Being a director in general, it is a lot of work just because when you're acting, you sort of have to just worry about your character and how you fit into the play and all that. But, but when you're directing, you have to worry about all the characters and and lighting and <laughs> props and set and all that stuff that 
being an actor you don't really have to worry about, you don't really have to know about except for, oh, I use this prop and where do I get this prop from? So there's just a lot, um, like, visualizing to do and, like, figuring out how everything works on the stage and making sure the actors are happy and, and also making sure the writer, uh, you're, you're, you're doing the play the way it, they want it to be done or, or would have wanted it to, done, to be done. And having her here, there's like extra pressure for me to get it right. As for the script itself, it's, it jumps back and forth a lot and, and uh, sort of like goes from one person to the next uh, really quickly sometimes. So, so that's been a challenge, but it's a, a fun challenge, but just trying to figure out like the transitions and, and how to make everything flow and not confuse the audience too much. <laughs> My name is Michaela Cannon and I am the writer and guider of Fragment. Um, I'm also an actor in the piece as well. Uh, uh, Fragment is a movement piece that's performed by 10 actors. Uh, I started working on the story and the characters about two years ago and I didn't really know what it was and, and kind of struggled with trying to fit it into a box with which I could work in and uh, started to write scenes with dialogue and really didn't get very far and wasn't very happy with the work that was produced and decided to leave it alone. And it wasn't until after a movement class earlier this year that I decided that I could tell the story without language, just using our bodies. And um, so I decided to, to do that. And uh, we, we began the work, uh, we began the rehearsal process with uh, a script that was uh, loosely, loosely written uh, all of the scenes had been kind of defined by something, whether it was uh, characters or relationships or a situation or a tone. And um, I guided the actors through uh, various improvisations to really allow them to find the story and the relationships with each other rather than me telling them exactly who these people were and, uh, and how they kind of worked together. And uh, from there I just kind of melded the story and the concepts and themes that I wanted to explore with their impulses and uh, where they went naturally and organically and somehow through rehearsals we've been able to work, I think, beautifully those two ideas together. Um, so what you see on stage is really um, a piece that has growing from the improvisations uh, I've guided the actors through. The production elements of this piece have been really important and uh, the designers who were in charge of those uh, production ele elements have been very helpful and have had very open minds uh, working on this. It, it hasn't been a finished, there hasn't been a finished script from the start with which to work so things have changed so uh, props have been uh, needed and then kind of deemed unnecessary and, and the the costumes have been really they've kind of been designed from a dance point of view so they're a lot more uh, abstract than costumes that we would normally use for plays and um, they really kind of uh, visualize whatever the character is going through um, which is which is really which is really cool to do and uh, and the, the lighting and sound have been a really big part in uh, kind of setting the piece, setting the tone for each new scene because we don't have a lot of uh, set pieces. Um, so it's been really, it's been really, really interesting to, to work this way really fluidly together as a group. And um, it was really important for me working on this to, to use this opportunity uh, to really get, allow everyone involved to to do whatever they wanted to do before we have to go out into the real world. So I uh, applaud everyone involved and I'm really grateful for everyone's open minds and, and just kind of willingness to dive into the unknown with me.